Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Skeptic Bible Study. And in recognition of Gay Pride Month, I would like to shift attention to Christianity's favorite obsession, the Judeo-Christian Islamic taboo that says that love is evil when the body parts are similar. It sounds silly when I put it that way, doesn't it? But that is what the taboo says, expressed in very plain language. And I like to ask Christians that whenever I hear them railing about the sin of homosexuality or how uh, gay marriage is a big threat to societal values and so forth, why does love become evil when the body parts are similar? Now, I realize that there are some liberal Christians out there who will try to say, well, that's not really what the Bible says. Well, no, I'm sorry. There, there really is no question about this. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 22 says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Uh, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13 goes on to say that if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Uh, it says to go out and kill the gays. And uh, in Romans chapter 1, verse 26 Paul extends the taboo to lesbians. He says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So, I'm sorry, but I hate to admit it, but in this particular point, Fred Phelps is right. The imaginary Bible God Yahweh really does hate gays. But fortunately, the good news is that Yahweh is completely imaginary. So, basically, we can do this. Now, uh, I know that there are some liberal Christians or, or gay or lesbian Christians out there, and, and what I want to really encourage you all to do is please come join us in the natural universe. It's really not so bad here. There are plenty of wonders that you can celebrate without thinking that angels are watching over it all. A garden is just as beautiful, even if it doesn't have magic pixies in it. But back to the topic of why does love become evil when the body parts are similar? Now, at this point, some conservative Christians will say, well, you're oversimplifying things. It's really more complicated than that. No, I, I don't see any reason to think whatsoever that uh, love becomes any different if it's for the same gender or the opposite gender. Anyone with a mature concept of love understands that what makes marriage sacred are such things as devotion, fidelity, commitment, sharing the journey of life with another human being, these are things that have nothing to do with gender. Anyone with a mature concept of love knows it's not about the physical mechanics of sex. And yet, you hear conservative Christians going on and on as if that were the number one consideration. That that's basically what makes marriage sacred to them. And the idea that any couple should be allowed to get married if they don't meet the body part requirement is just totally unthinkable to them. That shows just how immature their concept of marriage really is. Now, others will go on to say, well, it's just not natural. Well, actually, there's been plenty of research that uh, shows to the contrary. Ever since the days of Aristotle, biologists working independently of each other have noticed that homosexuality does, in fact, exist in the animal kingdom. It exists in nature. It is not, as Paul said, unnatural. Now, some conservative Christians will say, well, marriage is all about the children and raising children, and uh, gay couples can't have children of their own. Well, uh, I was once engaged to marry a woman who could not have children. She and I had talked about it. Uh, she confided in me, saying that she could not, uh, she felt like she could not carry, and I assured her that I loved her, and I still wanted to be with her, and I wanted to marry her, and, and I didn't care about the issue of, of whether or not we could have children. We could always adopt. And uh, some will say, well, gays can't adopt children. They, they can't raise children as well as heterosexuals can. Well, in my book, God vs. the Bible, I actually did cite one psychology study that showed that, no, in fact, gays are equally capable as their heterosexual counterparts of raising children. So that argument is not valid either. Finally, one Christian actually honestly expressed to me what this issue was really all about. He said to me, and please, these are his words, not mine. He said, I just don't like the idea that two fags can have a relationship equal to the one that I have with my wife. Thank you. I appreciate that kind of honesty, that pure, unadulterated expression of bigotry, 
without any garbage pretext about how somehow it's all about family values or it's about protecting the sacred institution of marriage or any of that garbage. All of that swept away, we see it's really all about bigotry. You want to feel superior to that person over there because that person over there is different from you. That's what this is really all about. If you would like to know more, please visit GodVersusTheBible.com. Thank you for listening, and may God's gift of reason light our way.